IPP is a platform where we as an indigenous are finding difficult to address our issue within our regions. So this AIPP has uh, created a platform for like us, indigenous people, to come and share our issue. Uh, AIPP also support us in many means, I mean financially, technically, and the aspiration that AIPP has to our association. A lot of people are saying that AIPP is a unique a regional organization in the sense that it has a very clear constituency in terms of its members. Uh, it has a democratic and transparent uh, governance uh, body and it has a high credibility in terms of uh, advocating uh, the, the rights of, of indigenous peoples. So it is now emerging as a unique kind of organization that is serving as a model wherein this kind of regional organization can actually exist and take the lead in advancing the rights of indigenous peoples. One thing you look for, I look for when you are dealing with discrimination is people who can hear you. You look for people who are willing to hear you. And that is relatively offered by AIPP when you are a member of AIPP. That has really given us some space to breathe that yes, today we have something to share and something to tell and the issue can be really highlighted. We took decision to form AIPP um, here in Chiang Mai 22 years ago. <laughs> the importance of forming this regional organization became very evident when we went to attend the United Nations Working Group on Indigenous Peoples. We realized that there was no idea of indigenous people existing in Asia. We put everybody who had come from Asia and prepared one joint statement. We happen to be the only group that made a regional presentation. Since yesterday, we are holding the sixth uh, General Assembly of the Asia Indigenous Peoples Path, and this is the gathering of all the member organizations of AIPP to come together to discuss and adapt the constitution and bylaws, to elect the new set of officers, particularly the Executive Council, and to agree on the strategic program of AIPP from 2013 to 2016. The adoption of the constitution and bylaws is very, very critical uh, in the organization uh, as it defines the principles that the, we, we need to operate on. Uh, it also defines the governance structures as well as the functions of this governance and the responsibilities of those sitting in these uh, different decision-making bodies. All the sub-regions are now discussing the strategic uh, program, so they are providing more input to enrich the draft uh, strategic uh, plan, as well as to ensure that this strategic plan will respond uh, to their needs and priorities. We continued with organizational strengthening where our members discussed on what are the key activities, especially at the sub-region, how do we address their capacity needs, how do we address or ensure that there is effective communication and coordination between the Executive Council, the Secretariat, and our member organizations. The, the second achievement of this sixth uh, General Assembly is the democratic and transparent selection of the members of the Executive Council where all the uh, members have participated actively and the decisions were reached by consensus. So I think this is a very good model of decision making and participation of our members. And it also includes uh, the participation or representation of youth and the direct representation of, of women, which didn't exist in the past uh, Executive Council of, of AIPP. So that their issues, their concerns, 
as well as their interests are discussed and mainstreamed in the whole organization as well as in the different programs of AIPP. I'll try to do my best in, in this uh, position and leadership along with the, the executive council members. I am not going to work for the benefit of only the Cambodia, but I have to work in solidarity in the spirit of unity from the youth in the regions. Um, it's my uh, um, honor and privilege that uh, the youth caucus support in this and confident in me. Indigenous women continue to remain invisible. They are still highly marginalized uh, and even in indigenous societies they are not effectively participating in decision-making processes. So it was a unanimous decision by all the women's uh, delegates to have uh, Anne Lassimbang from Malaysia to be the representative of women in the Executive Council. The woman representative will make sure that in the deliberations and discussions of the Executive Council, the specific concerns of women are also addressed. Another work or task of the representative is to ensure that the gender policy of AIPP is implemented by the organization. So it's important that we highlight and put more attention to women's uh, empowerment so that they can also effectively uh, address their issues as well as fight for their, their, their rights uh, as indigenous women. And at the same time, the uh, Executive Council, the new Executive Council, will, will have its first meeting. And the old Executive Council will be joining this meeting as a transition, as a, a transition uh, meeting where we have both the old and the new members sitting together for, to undertake some key uh, organizational decisions and how the new EC is going to function for the next uh, four years. So we have invited the uh, donors of AIPP and uh, eight of our donors are, are coming. How can we collaborate to strengthen uh, the movements and capacities of indigenous peoples in Asia? There are still very common uh, problems of, of indigenous peoples ac across Asia. Uh, the, the current problem, the current crisis that we're really facing is the land alienation. We are facing a uh, big issue, serious issue uh, concerning the presence of extractive industries. The lands of indigenous peoples are being are taken away either for uh, plantations, for mining, for dam building, for real estate, even for ecotourism or conservation measures. So when they build this hydro project dam, more than 25,000 families were displaced from that land without any compensations, without any rehabilitations. A lot of governments are still saying that we are all indigenous uh, in our own country and they, they refuse to make the, the distinction of those who are specifically disadvantaged because of their ethnicity, the, their historical marginalization, their historical subjugation and that is still quite a long way to go in a number of uh, countries. We have become marginalized and become very microscopic. They call you a mountain people or a headhunter. You are alone, you are isolated with that name, you feel crippled. We are also experiencing worsening human rights violations. Uh, there are alarming cases of uh, political killings. Many of our indigenous people were killed, assassinated, arrested and put into jail. With the adoption now of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, that is now a major tool for us to demand and work with governments towards the realization of our, our, our rights. It really gives you the confidence to really fight for the cause of the indigenous people. And it also gives a space where you can really uh, do a lot of advocacy to the international forum. And the first thing for the human being is right to land.
The indigenous peoples are given the right to decide or to say yes or no to a project based on their interest, based on uh, their welfare, and, and this is based already on the recognition of their land, territories, and resources. And that is why consent is, is needed. They are the ones who should take decisions on how their lands, territories, and resources are going to be used. If, if our rights are going to be recognized, this will be not against the government, but in fact strengthening the kind of partnership that we can build, not only with governments, but with corporations and, and, and with others. My hopes for the future of indigenous peoples, it's very simple, uh, also very complicated. I believe we are now on a course um, to appreciate sufficiently of what we inherited and value our institutions. I believe there are a lot of opportunities that we can also uh, optimize now that are now towards uh, the recognition of the rights of, of indigenous peoples. And we hope that this will become a reality, especially uh, for indigenous peoples at the village level where I think at the end of the day that's where we make a judgment on how effective is, is our work. Hello, Lai.